Welcome to the 38th Annual KFYR-TV Budweiser Bowling Classic, live from Midway Lanes in Mandan. Sponsored by McQuaid Distributing, Licks Liquor, and your news leader. And welcome inside live at Midway Lanes here in Mandan for the 38th Annual KFYR-TV Budweiser Bowling Classic. I'm Lee Timmerman along with Brian Gehring. And uh, we started yesterday with 120 bowlers. It took a 203.7 average just to make the top 30, and you need to be in the top 30 in order to bowl today. Travis Herzrud, by the way, uh, bowled the eight games yesterday with an average of 238. He won the TV uh, for being the uh, top qualifier uh, from Feist Electronics. Let's bring in Brian now from Midway Lane. And Brian, uh, what did the guys have to do today to get to our Step Lander TV finals? They had to bowl really good. <laughs> it was a little tougher today. Uh, the lanes didn't break down as much as they did yesterday because, well, less people on the pair. Mm -hmm. There's only two per pair instead of six. So they, they didn't hook near as much. So it made for quite an interesting day. Was the, the pattern you laid down, the oil pattern, the same today as yesterday? Or did, uh, did that alter a little bit? No, exact same. The only difference is the, the amount of players on the on the pair. Okay. And Chad Nelson, our defending champion, Chad does have an opportunity to do something that has not happened since the uh, 80s, 88, 89, and 90, and that's when back-to-back -back championships, and that was John Juba that did it three times in a row. So uh, here we go, uh, Brian. Let's talk a little bit about the five. We started again with 120. We're down to the final five. It's a traditional bowling stepladder finals. Uh, before we meet the final five, talk about what a stepladder finals is for those that may not know. Well, the stepladders are the top five bowlers from today, and they'll compete head-to-head, -head, one game match, until we determine a winner. And it really doesn't matter at all what the score is, as long as you have one pin more than the next guy, right? That's exactly <laughs> it. You shoot 121, your opponent shoots 120, you're moving on. And last year, if you uh, recall, it was one pin that made the difference in the championship match in which, uh, Chad, uh, which uh, Chad won. So our first match will be our number five qualifier against number four. First of all, let's meet our number five qualifier. It's Jamie Craig. He's from Minot. Oh, Jamie Craig, he's a the young gun out here. <laughs> I remember watching him bowl when he was five years old. He just he throws it the same way, just a lot better now. And he doesn't throw it like uh, most everybody. I know it's becoming more popular, but he's a two-hander, right? He is. Jamie's our only two-hander on the show today. Uh, and he snuck in in the last game. There was a pretty tight, tight game in the last to get the fifth spot. And our number four qualifier today is Ryan Engel. Ryan's from just across the river in Bismarck, so our, our two young guns will face off right away. Tell me a little bit about Ryan. I think it's Ryan's first TV show. I'm not 100% positive. He's been bowling really well this year. He's making just about every cut, every tournament he goes to. So he just snuck in there, and we'll see what happens. Whoever wins our first match will take on our number three qualifier. That's Thomas Wolf from Bismarck. And Thomas is, uh, has been on the TV show a, a number of times and uh, a veteran, if you will, of that, not only this tournament but uh, of bowling well for uh, quite a while in, uh, in Bismarck, Mandan, and across North Dakota, right? He has. He's no stranger to TV. He's, he's been there and, and done it before. Uh, he's bowling well this year, too. I, 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 it's hard to call it right now. <laughs> we don't know. That's why we get to watch. It's fun. Everybody, we do, if you know the ending of a, of a sporting uh, contest, it's not quite as fun. Uh, and we talked about this guy already. Our number two qualifier is Chad Nelson. Chad's back from Owatonna, Minnesota. Chad is our defending champion, and this year in the number two spot. What's Chad's game been like to you? Well, Chad's game's almost always the same. Uh, he's really hard to beat. He's super smooth, tries to keep the ball in play, not get into trouble. Well, I mentioned our championship match last year was one pin different. It was Chad beating his friend Brady Stearns, our number one qualifier this year. Brady's from St. Augusta, Minnesota in that St. Cloud area. And uh, Brady knows what it's like to be the number one qualifier uh, heading into our stepladders because he was in that same position last year. He was. Brady's in that position a lot, and I mean a lot. He took a different approach than everybody today. You'll see that on the show. He created his own spot on the lane. Nobody was out there with him. So it, it, I like his chances. And we will see how those play out in just a few minutes. Our first match, Jamie Craig and Ryan Engel is up next. It is the uh, Stepladder Finals, match number one of the 38th Annual KFYR TV Budweiser Classic, and it starts right after this. Thank you. 
you see that all right? Yep. Moving over. That's really, I mean, I can see, that's yeah, nice if you ask about the ball because I can see what they're throwing. Yep. Or make a ball change. <clears throat> okay, LT's mic. This is mic number one. Test, 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 test. I when we uh, never come up with anything better than just test, 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 test. Test. Okay. 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 Uh, Brian, they want you to talk. Oh, yeah. Let's go test, right test, about test. there. Okay. Can A little more. Me? We got it. Welcome back to your news leader station in Bismarck, Minot, Williston, and Dickinson. It's the 38th annual KFYR TV Budweiser Bowling Classic. Lee Timmerman again here alongside Brian Gehring. And, and uh, Brian, uh, these two young guys will get us started. And I guess, obviously, they're younger than me, but the, as, as young as these guys are, they're already accomplished in, in what they do on the lanes, aren't they? They are. Uh, these The youth nowadays has way more opportunity than we did growing up with bowling. They're able to bowl the adult tournaments now and earn scholarship money instead of prize fund money. Okay. And uh, Tristan is out there getting everything set. He'll get the names in the computer and talking over. And and uh, it is uh, Ryan's option as being the, num uh, the higher qualifier, right, to determine who starts, which is the bigger deal on which lane you want to end on is that kind of what the decision making is on that correct also who finishes first mm -hmm. there's a little some guys prefer to finish first to put pressure on their opponent or they some like to lay in wait to see if they can throw that three bagger to win the match yeah there's tristan right there putting the names in i remember a few a handful of years ago when uh, tristan kind of he came in and made the show yeah, he did. I know it all too well. <laughs> Why is that? Well, I was the one that he took off the show. <laughs> Uh-oh. I didn't know I was picking out a scab, but right off the bat, that's kind of fun. <laughs> I think you did. That's okay. No, I really didn't. <laughs> oh, you, yeah, it was good. That was two years ago. <laughs> I, he filled I, in for uh, Bob Vandervoorst, I yep, believe, who he got did. sick. It's right. <laughs> right, so... Jamie Craig will get us started. Jamie again from Minot. Little light on the first ball. Yeah, the washout. You might see a few of those. We had a, a lot of volume for oil this week. Uh, we tried to put a pattern out that would play really even and be super fair to everybody. So if you get the ball to the right a little too far with too much speed, you're going to miss the head pit. She's not going to come back, huh? And Jamie is throwing what we would consider a big bowling ball. It's got an aggressive cover and a big weight block in it. So an open to start here for Craig off the split. And it'll be our first look next for Ryan Ingle. Ryan plays it a little bit straighter, what we call try to keep it simple so you don't. A little bit of a high hit there on his first ball. But these lanes, and you can explain it better than I, because I can't, but I'm just saying it's been, what, 40 minutes maybe since anybody has rolled, uh, you know, on these lanes, and, and they can change just by not having anything happen on them, correct? Yeah, just the time for throughout the day and how many balls have been, you know, thrown out there. The oil doesn't really move, but it can kind of settle. And generally, they're playing the same part of the lane throughout the day. You kind of burn a track in there so that they have something to throw the ball at. So the advantage here for Engel, of course, is that he's working off a spare. It's his second frame. First chance on our lane 31, and he buries it. Yeah, that was a great shot. And like always, it's if they haven't been on the TV show or it's been a while, you get those first few shots that you get mm -hmm. the jitters. 
Look at the replay, and that's about as – you'll take that every time. Put it that every, way. <laughs> every time. Let's see how Jamie comes back. And it's his first test on lane number 32. For years, this was lane 15 and 16, which was our championship pair. They haven't moved. It was just the house has gotten bigger. Yep, different masking units. A little high there. That was a good shot. I remember those days I worked here in high school. Funny how life circles around again. It does. <laughs> I'm happy to be home. See, now back, back then, Brian, you probably worked here. Now you almost live here. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. We did the same then, too. It was pretty busy. There's the first fill for Jamie. I think the old adage is if you're going to make a mistake, make it early, right? First frame. And then just start from the second. Four or nine there. In terms of just the physical nature of a two-hander versus a traditional, try if you can to explain the difference a little bit about what you just have to do physically to throw a ball consistently like that. Yeah, well, it takes a lot of practice. Some of these kids, that's how they learn, so it comes a lot more natural to them. Uh, you have to get your body out of the way more. When, you, when you're throwing it two-handed so you can get the ball to push to the right because they put so many more revolutions on it. Is, is, uh, is calling it a more athletic approach? Is that a, is that a way that might a little? help describe? Yeah, that's about right. Ingle working off a strike. It's his that third like frame. It. And there it looked uh, just about a carbon copy of what came on uh, lane 31. That's impressive. That's two really good shots in a row. One thing I did hear a number of uh, guys, I guess, or, or a gal in this case, when talking with Missy a little bit, was that uh, the oil pattern did allow some variety in how you wanted to approach it. You didn't have to just kind of burn one spot, right? Is that something Correct. that the guys had this weekend? Yeah, you could play the outside part of the lane, which is more of what we were going for. To the second arrow and out, that's kind of where the sweet spot is for your angle entry into the pocket. And they were able to play that for a few games until they had to jump into the middle part of the lane. Oh, hey, he got it. Great spare. <laughs> I was talking with a few guys yesterday, too, and... And uh, in a sense, to me, I, I always equate bowling, and I, and I never bowled consistently, a little bit like golf, that, okay, if you don't have the first really bad shot, then how can you have the really good recovery? <laughs> That's a good <laughs> and, and is so, approach. So, so without the six count, he doesn't have a chance to pick up the, sp the right. split, right? That was a little not textbook to pick it up, but he kicked it off the back and... That's a good shot from Jamie. And you can, obviously, you know, we're watching it here and you're watching it at home and you can tell that he got the strike, but you could hear the impact and could tell that that one was, was going, going to, to be, be a, a strike. strike. Yeah. Jamie had a pretty good feeling as soon as that left his hand if it was going to be a strike. You can, when you're letting go of it, you just can feel if you think you're going to hit the pocket. Craig working on a strike. It's frame number five, 58 count to this point. Here's where you want to start stringing those X's together. Oh, he threw that a little bit. That yep. was a good shot. <laughs> that feeling he had, he was able to come back on the left side and do it again. He did. And that one was a little bit faster, it looked like. 
like he might have been forcing it to the pocket. Ryan Ingles now up for his fifth. There's the power of the strikes. You see the two count pin difference. A little high. It is a fine line in there. Uh, we had some other players using urethane today, which is a different type of bowling ball, and that tends to take the oil from the front part and put it on the back, which makes the ball not hook. And he covers that one. A little easier than his last spare pickup. That is. <laughs> the max you see on the right side of your screen, obviously, is is if you get a strike from this point of, the, of your game all the way through the end. We didn't get a three. You predicted a 300 yesterday. We didn't get a 300, but, boy, we had multiple 279s, and we're dancing with it. We were. I, I, I really thought we'd have one this weekend. Three or four 279s, which is one away. Hey, for Ryan here now, That's a, this is back-to-back -back on lane 31 that slid to the right. What's the inner monologue? What's the battle do you have with yourself? <laughs> What's your conversation in your head at this point? At this point, one game match, and you need to make a move. Uh, it looks like he's having a problem with the feeling of the bowling ball. He's taking a piece of tape off of his thumb. Or missing that pin like that, I would probably just grab a little bit more aggressive bowling ball, something that hooks more. So if you leak it to the right, it'll climb up that hill. Imagine if someone else could actually hear the conversation you have with yourself while you're bowling. <laughs> oh, that would be funny. <laughs> and not to television appropriate, oh, no, for sure. Absolutely not. Sixth frame, Jamie Craig from Monica. Oh. Now that one sounded like a strike, but wasn't. Yeah, he's not going to be happy with that. That's a, a solid tap is what we call that. Okay, explain that. Well, that means he hit the pocket exactly how you were supposed to. There are some that would say that is the only true bad break in bowling. Right there is the eight pin. The ball should have drove through and taken that pin out. One of the top ten things that science can't explain, right? Exactly. And he covers it. We do have certain moves we can make depending on what pin you're leaving. If you're leaving a lot of ten pins or a lot of sevens or four, it's a simple little adjustment. A solid eight like that's hard to move once you have the pocket. Back when the David Letterman show was on NBC, there was a top 10 list of what top 10 things that science can't explain, and I can only remember one of them, and it was number seven. It wasn't even number one. I'll tell you, okay. tell you what it is after Craig throws this one. Who's David Letterman? <laughs> High hit. Yeah, pulled that one a little bit. Okay, but number seven of the top ten things that science can't explain was, if Mr. Ed could talk, why did he not complain about having to stand in straw soaked with his own urine? <laughs> <laughs> Don't know why. That's I've, pretty random. I've remembered yeah. that for decades. <laughs> it's true, though. <laughs> some things you can remember. Some, sometimes it's like, where's, where did I park my car? <laughs> I did that the other day at the grocery store. Oh. That's a rare... Okay, at this point of the match, it's a little bit of a game changer, too, right? That is. That Ryan can actually take a deep breath but try to just make okay. a good shot here. Okay, so Craig opened the door. Now it's Ryan has to, go r to run through it here, right? Exactly. No, like at, least, at, least the se at least the seven went down. It did. It looked like he moved his feet a little further left. And that could have he got, got into the oil a little bit more. Maybe why it didn't drive through was good. Baseball's my favorite sport. 
Yeah. So I like his spare ball. Yeah, I, that, noticed, I noticed that yesterday, too. Those were pretty cool. They made a golf ball also. That one's a little bit older. He's had that a while. And it has a Yankees logo on it, so. I see that. Does that make and it Ryan, better? Uh, n well, according to Ryan does, his <laughs> email address starts with Yankees rule. I won't give you oh. the rest of it, but that starts with Yankees rule. Ooh, split. On the scale of uh, 1 to 10 in splits, how's this one rank? Uh, 10. Yep, about That's, as hard as it gets. It's almost as bad as a 7-10. Yeah, there's that Yankees logo. Took the county, bounced it up there. Well, never a good time for an open, but eighth frame of a head-to-head -head match is definitely not the right time for it, is it? Uh, no. Uh, when your opponent, Jamie's on an open yet, too. Yep. If he can capitalize here and throw a double, that will make it a little bit tougher for Ryan. Puts the pressure on. Went Brooklyn enough to <laughs> every once in a while you just say thank you to the bowling gods and there's a thank you, right? That is a big break. Now I've seen Jamie throw about four of those today. All strikes? All strikes. At crucial times in a match. But to be on these patterns, these oil patterns we bowl on, when you get one of them it's it's a blessing and you just move on and try to get the, the double behind it. And it comes in the eighth frame of a head-to-head -head match of the stepladder finals. Right after an open. Didn't quite get there. Well, that's the oil pattern that we were talking about earlier. It didn't look that much different, but the ball never... <laughs> So Hooked. right about yeah, right about there where that early glare is, it's you at that point you know it's not coming back, right? Right. If the ball's not starting to hook, it's you're gonna leave that wash out. He did leave one of these in the position round and pick it up to keep his fifth place spot. And we saw it earlier in this match get done. Just missed the head pin. Well advantage mm. Ryan right now. When about four minutes ago we thought <laughs> it was the other <laughs> advantage for for Craig. That's the beauty of the head-to-head, -head, and this is, you know, it is. You can you, it, uh, you just feed off of what your opponent's doing, and once you have momentum, then you go with it. Yeah, Ryan's doing a little searching right now, isn't he? Within, he is. within himself, huh? Well, if he gets the spare, he's still at a pretty good advantage. Jamie has 180 up there. I just meant searching to find the solid pocket. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yeah, he's it just it. enough. He threw another reactive ball at that. I don't know if he was trying to see what that ball would do, or he didn't feel comfortable throwing plastic. Or his spare ball, the Yankees one. This is 10th frame. He needs a spare. If you're, if you're new to watching bowling, 10th frame is where you do have the opportunity to throw three times if you, in this case, get the spare, you'll have one more. And he does. He needs five pins to shut out Jamie. It's all 10. That was a good shot. So Ryan Engel will advance. 
of Jamie Craig, again from Minot, will finish up his 10th frame. Jamie, by the way, is interning at Brady Marts right now. We give him saying that one of the young guns, which he is, but he still has bowled 18 years. He's a four-time high school most valuable bowler. Uh, 2020 then, youth championship out in the Midwest. And that will end our first match. It's a 186 to a 159. And there's the Knuckles, and we'll bring in Thomas Wolf, our number three qualifier. We'll talk about Thomas and set up our next match. After you see this, it's the 38th annual KFYR-TV Budweiser Bowling Classic on your news leader. After our first match, sets up a battle of Bismarck. A couple of Bismarck bowlers going head to head next. That's Thomas Wolf taking his practice opportunities here, and he will choose who starts the match. Thomas has been oh so close over the years in this tournament. He's he made the uh, championship 2019 when Matt Smallen rolled the 266 on him. Oh yeah. He, Thomas just made a show a month ago up in Minot at the Masters. Well, speaking of Matt Smallen, Smallen, Matt is one of three individuals to win this tournament three times. We mm -hmm. mentioned John Juba off the top. Matt won in 2013, 15, and 19. And then Jack Nelson is also a three-time winner of this tournament, 92, 96, and in 08. I've been updating Jack all weekend. This was as far as making sure everything's running, lanes. It was his baby. So Wolf gets us started on lane 31, and he starts it with a strike. I would call Thomas's approach to the line traditional. Very much am, so. Am I accurate there? And really solid. He, if you watch when he gets to the foul line, nothing's moving. He just comes through the shot really well. And the first frame for Ryan Engel. He had one coming across, but didn't quite kick Connect. it over. Yep. A good shot. Well, I mentioned those three guys who are three-time champions of this tournament. We also have Dwayne Sandvik, who was a two-time winner. Dwayne won in 95 and 98. 
And this pair is covered. Phil Mann is a two-time champion. He won in, in 03 and in 12. And then Dave Schick also won this tournament twice, 12 years apart, in 99 and in 2011. Mm -hmm. That's I haven't what, seen Dave Schick in a, no. a while. That's how we've come up with the 28 different champions in the previous 37 years of this event. High hit. Yeah, he was kind of bent over a little bit more on that shot. Had his head out in front of him. That'll tend to make the ball come up heavy on the head pin. Chopped it. Still early, but you don't want to give Thomas too many open doors. You hit, you hit this so square that it goes straight back. Second frame, Thomas Wolf. Thomas again from Bismarck. There's that talking to yourself thing again in bowling. It is. He, he, when he did that with his wrist, he kind of hit up on that a little more. He didn't get it out on the lane as well yeah. as he'd like to. On that replay, you could almost see his hand kind of going in. And judging by how it hit, he will take what he got. He yeah, would gladly have the, the eight pins, right? That's there. what we call a good eight. Could have very easily been a big split. So two fields for Thomas, strike and a spare. Heading into his third. Well, we've talked about this too, Brian, before, where this, the atmosphere of midway lanes right now is so different at this point over any other time in the two days. It is. It's we just got the so two different. days full. Yep. And the bar, if you look at our, the TV area up there, it's full. <laughs> I had somebody just walk out the door not too long ago. So going home to yep, watch going home TV. to watch it. That's what we talk about. It happens a lot. Seven pin left there on Wolf in his third frame. But just usually on any given time you walk in here, you know, even on an afternoon, you know, there's a there's a bunch of lanes that are filled and there's so much noise that's associated with this that when you come in now and don't hear it, it's almost a little weird. It is. You can hear a pin <laughs> drop. Well, Wolf trying to get one pin to drop, and he did. It's fair. Engels High Sanction Series is an 821. Carries a 217 league average and has knocked them all down a few times, getting his has his 300. And like we said earlier, this season he's he's been bowling extremely well in tournaments. I know this because the tournaments that I go to, I am not making the cuts and I see he is. <laughs> No chop on this one. Got to all three with the uh, with the ball. He still is kind of battling something. I don't know how you guys make it through a weekend, let alone weekend after weekend after weekend with the abuse <laughs> your hands and wrists and legs and hips and everything else takes. We because do. because at home, you know, for an hour and a half or so, you're going to watch bowling. But I mean, you you were here at like 4:30 this morning. These guys started bowling at 7:30 this morning. And that's just today, not counting yesterday. Right, yeah, they will 10 games of, of match play this morning to get to this point, and then the eight qualifying yesterday. For some, when somebody bowls a lot, you can actually usually look at their right thumb and tell if they bowl a lot. It's a different <laughs> size than their left one. This is a tough spare. You're right. He's having a, a mm -hmm. problem with the feel of the bowling ball. 
And when you have a couple opens like that, it just compounds on you and it makes you start overthinking. Certainly an opportunity here for Wolf. He likes it for good reason. That ball was good off his hand. When he let go of it, he kind of stayed there, hung with the shot. You know that he liked it when he let go of it. Yeah. Again, I, I equate things to, to the game of golf. Mm -hmm. And when you start your backswing, you can tell before you come close to the ball that it's, it's like, hey, that went right where I wanted it to. <laughs> and that was the same case with that last shot for Wolf. It was right how he wanted it to be. Fifth frame, working on a strike. That one was pretty good, too. The 10 stays up. Ten. And I always, I, I think, I guess you could back me up on this, but I always call the 10 pin the most cursed pin in bowling. Is it? Yeah, for right-handers, For righties, I mean. Yeah, or the seven for lefties. Well, you saw how many pins he threw over there, and it's like, how does one of them not touch it? And it's a relatively easy spare, but you can get the yips sometimes. He covers. He, he would have almost got the 710 with that. So a strike, spare, spare, strike, spare. Right there it is in front of you for Thomas Wolf, 89 count through his fifth. Ryan, Ryan needs to kind of. Yeah, I mean, by no means is he out of it, but no. he has to start. He does, now, because right? Thomas has hit the pocket now three times in a row. So he's there. It's just a matter of carry. There's. <laughs> <laughs> yep, the smile. Hey, look it. It went where I wanted it to. It had a pretty good round of applause. No, no, that, that hits as good as it gets, right? It is. That's a textbook strike. There's Thomas Wolf standing there behind Tristan, and just to Tristan's right, your left is Chad Nelson, who will be up next. And there's Chad taking a really good look at that, or that's who Thomas was taking a really good look at how that ball's reacting. So that's why there's Chad right in the bottom there. That's what he's doing now, right? Is trying to judge what, what he sees as a doing. reaction from the lanes. For yep. that'll make a difference what ball he's going to start with and what part of the lane he's going to play. First time on TV of this in this event for Ryan. And it was kind of, it was a battle this weekend. The scores are all really close. softer with that in terms of less speed you mean yes okay so he thinks it's a strike right about there and then it cuts over hooks or whatever yep it cuts some friction we call it where a drier part of the land and the ball got started earlier than he wanted it to but just to follow up on what you're talking about just kind of how how close things were and i i know this is yesterday which is different than today but for the 27th spot out of 30, there was a three-way tie. <laughs> there was, 27, 28, 29. Uh, and then if you look at the rest from, well, Travis ran away with it yesterday. Uh, but the rest, when we were announcing that cut line, there was one pin, two, mm -hmm. three, four. There's usually a gap of 10, even 15. It stayed pretty tight, the whole top 30 or 29. Yeah. And that's the fun of the banquet because when, when Brian announces the 30 who make it into today, we start with number one. Because, like you say, those top guys, they know they're in. Right. But when you start to squeeze closer to that 30, you get some interesting reactions to people who think they're in, but maybe not, and then that's disappointed because they didn't make it and they thought they did. And there's another one that didn't come back. <clears throat> there's life for Ryan. Yeah, when you get to that number 25 and announce the number, that's when you see everybody <laughs> looking at their sheets and <clears throat> trying to calculate... 
But I think that the the razor thin difference, it, the the last replay we had of Thomas where it overhooked at the end, this one didn't have enough on the on the left side. I mean that's all. That, and he didn't miss by much, right? He did not. Oh, you got that's, him. That was a great spare. Yeah, there's not a very big area that you can miss where you're aiming at to still get the strike. <laughs> Again, without the first bad shot, you don't get the elation from the good second shot. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> Ryan switched balls here. And then you got the Brooklyn. Put you on the spot. Any idea how that got named? I do know. No. no. I, there is a story. Yeah, and there's, there's always a story behind something. Our number, a no. couple. I, just, I can't seem to remember it. Brady Stearns just down there in the lower left by Tristan there. He's our number one qualifier. And from Brooklyn to missing the head mm -hmm. That's the outside part of the lane that we were talking about earlier. There's so much oil out there that it's hard to get the ball to get started. There's, n It's just a line of oil all the way down. Nope. This is frame number eight for Thomas Wolf. Oh, that was a pretty <laughs> good break. Thomas, father of five, 13 years apart. His oldest is 20, his youngest is seven. Been bowling for 35 years. Came up through the junior ranks. His highest sanctioned series is an 848. Which 900 is the Is the best you can, get. you can get. Yep. Carries a league average of 230. Ninth frame. With a strike for Wolf. That was a really good shot. Looked like he might have tried to put a little more revolutions on that one. After the five count in the frame before. Ninth frame for Engel. He got the strike. Ryan in our first match defeated Jamie Craig 186 to 159. Yeah, Ryan's going to need a double here for sure. But Thomas, it looks like he's only going to need some count and a spare. Should put Thomas Wolf in, right? Yeah, that takes care of it. Be the sec his uh, second ball, of the tenth frame here for Ingle. And he'll throw one more just to finish out. And Thomas Wolf will finish his tenth, and then Thomas Wolf will get ready for Chad Nelson. Well, this will be the least pressured ball he throws on TV today. It is. <laughs> there it is. And, that was and a there, good shot. oh, it was a good shot. He left the nine, though. The arm swing loosens up. Yep. The shoulder loosens up when you get to that point. So I'm go with a 158. Wolf already has him closed out with a 161. Now there's an opportunity to uh, 
look around if for Wolf if he wants to try to experiment a little here. He can. Exactly right. Uh, and he might have done that right there. Did. Yep. That, yeah, that one looked mm. a lot slower. Yeah. Generally, guys will grab a different ball if they don't like the way that one is going down the lane. And it looks like he's going to do mm -hmm. that, grab something else that's probably a little bit cleaner or goes down the lane further before it starts to hook. That's Chad Nelson there on the right, standing up. Our number two qualifier. Wolf will finish out his 10th frame. And there he, he didn't care that he hit a pin. He wanted to see how that ball moved, right? Exactly. <laughs> so it's a 182 for Thomas Wolf to Ryan Ingalls. 158. So our second match is in the books. And so far, the seeds have held up. Our three seed, Thomas Wolf, will take on number two, Chad Nelson. That's up next. And that's what they're bowling for right here in the 38th annual KFYR TV Budweiser Bowling Classic. We'll be right back. And welcome back on your news leader, the 30th annual KFYR TV Budweiser Bowling Classic, presented by McQuaid's Distributing and Lakes Liquor. Our next match is our number two qualifier, Chad Nelson, against Thomas Wolf. You just saw Thomas defeat Ryan Ingle. Here's a good look at Chad Nelson from Owatonna, Minnesota, our defending champion. And that looks like we're watching a rerun from last year. <laughs> That's his practice ball. He wishes he could count it. If there's one thing from the last couple of years of just watching Chad, I mean, obviously, in anything you do, if you minimize your mistakes, you're going to be better at it. And he just doesn't make very many clearing mistakes, does he? He does not. I mean, every shot is smooth. Same thing every time. And his experience is by far mm. the most in the field, partly because of age. But he's... Yeah. And Thomas will start us here. This is frame front, uh, frame number one. Our second to last match here in the Stepladder Finals. Thomas Wolf. Strike one. He didn't change balls. He went back to the mm -hmm. one he's been using. But. And Chad Nelson. Why do you talk about experience? He's won. 
He's from Minnesota. We mentioned Owatonna. He's got 20 state championships in Minnesota. High roller Megabucks champion. Bowled in the PBA Masters a few years back and finished sixth. And that's a huge tournament. <laughs> huge tournament. That's against the, the top PBA players. And then the Central Bowlers Alliance. That's the Minnesota little tour that they it's not little it's a tour they have mm -hmm. out there and 40 of those is an accomplishment on its own and a strike to start it for chad nelson chad's highest sanctioned series 858 Solid. That's the look of determination right there. His starting point, it seemed like, was a little further to the left. He he is. He's quite mm -hmm. a ways left. Uh, the shot on 31, he didn't okay. quite hook it as much. Here's the ball that Thomas experimented with in the uh, in the 10th frame. He's going to throw it here on lane 32. That's why he changed. It is. <laughs> Two different balls on each lane, so that tells me Thomas has one lane hooking more than the other. Too much hook on that one. Looking for his third straight strike to get things started, but it didn't happen here for Wolf. Yeah, he kind of rolled his hand around that one when you watch that replay. different would the game of bowling be today and I know some people still do this if you were like forced to use the same ball for every shot it would be a lot different because <laughs> if yeah you're using one ball you, you need to just make a bunch of adjustments throughout the night rather than if one ball quits working you just grab another one stay in the same part of the lane and move on with the day Nelson looking for a turkey to get things rolling. Nope. Nine count. Are there, I, I'm assuming somewhere there have to be events that some places have fun tournaments or whatever like that, or, or do they do they exist where you can only use one ball? There is. There's uh, Brad Peterson up in Williston that bought the bowling center for me. Uh, February 25th has a one ball mm -hmm. tournament. So when you're warming up practice, you pick the ball that you're going to use, and that's what you use for the whole mm -hmm. tournament. And he covers his first spare. So is that, like, fun to watch the frustration from guys yeah, and is. gals trying to do that? It sounds to me like it'd be a blast. It's a, it's a good tournament. It's fun. Uh, people take different approaches. Some think the lanes are going to dry up, so they grab a, a pole that doesn't hook as much. Some grab more aggressive stuff. It makes the lanes change quite drastic, which is what we were talking mm -hmm. about earlier. Just one pin separating these two right now. That, that ball actually hit the lane and started hooking right away. I don't know if we can see it on the replay. Right behind him, you can see it a little bit better. Brady Stearns in the uh, off on lane 17, still warming up and getting ready. He's our top qualifier. We'll take on the winner of this match for the championship. Two strikes, two spares for Nelson to get things started.
because it's quite a drive for Chad to get back to Oatana, and and he was talking about how he likes about the 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 format of this tournament and the timing of this tournament being that we're at 12:30, he can get home at somewhat reasonable time to get to work tomorrow. Sure, set at two o'clock in the morning. Yep. Ooh, ah, Thomas tough, thought he yeah. had it. And pins flying all around. Just didn't touch the nine. So these two guys on a familiar, or similar, I guess I should say, pace here, assuming Thomas covers this spare. Two strikes and two spares to get things started. Oh. Yep. <laughs> yeah, was, I was nervous for him. <laughs> I, I think about halfway down, Thomas thought he missed it. Yeah, that's because there's that line of oil, and right there is where I thought he was going to miss. Because you don't intentionally like practice in case there's a split, right? <laughs> right. He that's was your... two inches from going in the gutter there. <laughs> <clears throat> there and I I don't remember what year it is. I'm just gonna say it was decades ago. I remember watching a PBA tour event, Mark Roth went back when Mark Roth was mm -hmm. dominating everything. Last ball, tenth frame, all he had to do was knock one pin over. And you remember how he was to throw it, throw it so wide and bring it back, and pins would explode. He, he channeled it and oh. lost. <laughs> yeah, that's a that's a tough one there when you just got to keep it on the lane. I mean, if he throws it straight, he knocks down one. But one. he but he threw his same thing, that big old swing, and it didn't come back, and it stayed out there, and he lost. There were a couple guys today that just needed to keep it on the lane uh, in their match play, and they just they threw it right down the middle. So both guys looking for a strike again here. Regroup and get something started. That part of the lane seems to be so. So explain. Going away. In, okay, going away. It, it's it's hooking earlier because of why. Well, they're playing in that same general area. So when you keep throwing a ball in the same part of the lane over and over. It takes the oil away, and when the oil is gone, the bowling ball sees that or f reads it, and it starts hooking. And he chopped it. Chopped. That's very uncharacteristic. Mm -hmm. But if you notice with Chad, when he does things like that, he doesn't get mad. You barely see a change in his demeanor. He just rolls it over and starts the next frame over. Such a look of determination. He was doing calculations in his head. He made the move there. That's how fine the line is. He probably only moved a couple boards. Okay. I was going to say, like it. when you like when you talked about the oil pattern moving a little bit. So is that you can see there the when you talk about a board, the width of each one of those boards, literally. So so how one big inch. or small? So so not not how wide the board is, but how wide is the miss? Is it like half a board he's missing? Uh, no, he might be about a board okay. there. But he it, by only moving that much, he caught. A board that had oil on it, yeah. and the ball didn't. That's start what to I, that's what I meant. Yep, so you're you're talking, and you're talking about a spot an inch away, three quarters of the way down the down the lane. Right. Interesting match though between these two guys. And again, the difference between a head-to-head -head step ladder is you just need one more pin than the next guy. It's not like you're trying to rack up your total pins for the day, so 
head to head. Right, and then in match play, you get the 30 bonus mm -hmm. for a win. Here it's. Move on. There's Wolf finding that spot he likes so much right there in the pocket. If he can find the same spot on 31, so, he'll. Yeah. So it looked like Thomas made a move to, to his left as well with his feet, correct? He did. Yep. On 32. Yep. 31 seems to be the tricky lane where Thomas had the five count the game before. Now he's trying to find a line. Working off that strike in the six. This is frame number seven, 116 pins behind his name to this point. Tried to work its way back in there. Got nine of them. You can see him start to get frustrated there because that was a really good shot, the ball. They just don't know where to throw it to get it to read the lane. Missed it. You could hear him faintly say, oh, Thomas, as soon as it left his hand. You did. Well, that certainly helps Chad in, when you look back at his fifth frame of chopping the one and leaving the open. It does. And the single pins, when they're in the middle of the lane, we get pretty pretty upset with ourselves. So those are 90% uh, plus makeable spare. Yeah. No, he didn't. The seven stayed. I thought he he hit it so well. I I made an assumption and it was wiggling. Yeah, I thought it was going over. Yeah, that single pin just to go back to Thomas's last frame. I mean, that's again. I'll try to equate it to golf. It's like missing a two foot putt, right? Right. Yeah. On our standard, you know, league shot, it's it's like missing a two inch putt. Oh. On this, they get a little more because the pattern's a lot tougher. Cross for the seven, and he converts it. Still a tight match, one pin difference for max score. Yeah, we're certainly into that anything could happen part of, the, of this match because it's certainly good. It is. We're far from over. Eighth frame. He made a really substantial move there. He went quite a ways further left, like a completely different part of mm -hmm. the lane. Sleeper. That's a good spare. When you see him throw his hands up, <laughs> that one, no matter what you do, until they're all down, you're, you're not. You, you're you sweat it, breath. huh? Yep. <laughs> and you got that sleeper back there and the six pin hanging out. Brady Stearns will take on the winner of this match for the championship. Thomas Wolf hopes to be in it. And he's hoping for a strike right here. No. That's pretty frustrating. Keeps the match interesting for us, though. <laughs> Which is the last thing that Wolf wants right now, right? You are right. 
Oh, he did it. Oh, no, he caught it. I, I thought, I, I just judging up by his reaction, I think he thought he missed it again. I'm watching. I th I'm almost identical. That's flirting with the edge there. Again, about three-fourths of the way down, I stopped watching the ball, and I was just looking at, at Wolf, and I, I, th I think he thought he missed it. He didn't yell, oh, Thomas. Yeah, though, so not we that never had a chance. Yep. So you're saying I got a chance. Ninth frame. He would love a strike right here. He got it. Chad's going to need to do the same thing yeah, here. I was going to say, he needs he, that last strike by Wolf does put a little pressure on this shot, doesn't it? It does. It. The ninth frame is one of the most important frames. Nope. And he got, got it. The break trip the four. Mm -hmm. Not a beauty contest. They just have to fall over, right? I was just going <laughs> to say that. At this point, it's a, he don't care as long as it went down. The head Keeps pin comes the off match. the left board and kind of kept everything possible, didn't it? Yep. And when I had four pin trips forward here, makes for a good day. So both guys load up the tenth with a strike in the ninth. Anybody's match. Flush in the pocket. Fortunate to leave only the four there with the nine was standing. When you come in at that angle and you're really high on the head pin, you have a pretty good risk of leaving the four nine right there. But also interesting too that Nelson decided that he wanted to finish first. And so Wolf now, after one more throw, will know what he has to do. Correct. The strike will give Chad a one ninety. Yes. And then Thomas needs. Eighty-nine. There, Thomas needs a spare. Needs to fill here, huh? Working with a strike in the ninth, the one sixty-four count to this point. So this is the tenth frame for Thomas Wolf. back-to-back -back champions. We will not. I'm thinking Brady Stearns is ready to try to come in and do it again. Brady won this tournament two years ago. Finished second last year. Second ball, 10th frame for Wolf. Knocks it down, he'll have a 2.03. So we'll have Thomas Wolf against Brady Stearns for the championship. And it is a 2.03 to a 189. Thomas Wolf defeats Chad Nelson, setting up our championship match here of the 38th annual KFYR TV Budweiser Bowling Classic. And that is up next.
And welcome back to Midway Lanes in Mandan. We're up to the championship match of the 38th annual KFYR TV Budweiser Bowling Classic. That guy right there you're looking at is Brady Stearns. He's from St. Augusta, Minnesota. He won this event two years ago. He was in the championship match, but was defeated by Chad Nelson last year. And he is our number one qualifier today. So he is in that uh, locked in position, but he hasn't he hasn't rolled for a while now, though. He hasn't, other than a few warm-up mm -hmm. shot, shots down on the other end. That shot right there is typical of what we've seen out of Brady all day today. And you will see when you see Brady throw, he's his his approach to where he places the ball in the lane will be different than what we've seen so far today on TV, right? Almost complete opposite, yes. He's the only one that's been out there. And we'll talk more about it, what, but, you'll, but you, it'll be a dramatic switch. Yeah. You'll know what we're talking about when you see it. And then we'll talk more about it. But Thomas Wolf will get it started. Let's see if he can find a way to get all mm -hmm. 10 on this one, or this lane. Wolf played for the title back in 2019 when he finished second to Matt Smallen. That was not the strike he was looking for. And again, that was a good shot. It looks the same as lane 32. The ball just gets to the pocket there and stops. Quits hooking. So he's throwing this ball for his spares too. That hooks more than the straight at him approach, right? Yeah, Thomas throws reactive. He just flattens his hand and throws it harder. hard. So a spare in the first. And here's our first look again at Brady Stearns for his first frame. We're going to go through his routine, scrape the shoe. Yeah. Stearns and Nelson are top two qualifiers here and the same two guys at Bolden for the title last year. They are in a lot of big tournaments together. They, they go around the region a lot. Around the country, yeah. or a lot. I'm betting Brady is going to have to buy dinner tonight, though. <laughs> He's going to have a bigger check. See how now? Watch. This is what we're talking about. See how far out before he brings it back. He is. He's right on the one board. All right. Try to explain a little bit of the why. Why? Why this approach is working for him today. Well, for starters, it's Brady Stearns. Uh, <laughs> he's, he's so methodical. He throws it the same every single time. When you watch him come off the approach, he does the same thing. Scrapes his shoe with the brush, set up, takes his time, doesn't throw it till he's ready, and repeats shots. strikes to start and does that so where he's at I mean if he misses even a half inch to the right that ball is going to go in the gutter and he's out there where not many have and so I guess explain the oil pattern so it, it, it's it's not as broken down or doesn't change as dramatically is that is that accurate that is plus well he's using a urethane mm -hmm. ball which is a lot less aggressive which he makes it still hooks a lot for him mm -hmm. split but here he, for wolf he creates that for the other players when he does that because that urethane carries some oil down and as brady continues to bowl like 32 was thomas's good lane he's been striking and coming mm -hmm. up flush now the ball doesn't quite make it back to the pocket, and that's uh, from the urethane ball instead of reactive going down the lane. Let's see if he can get it. Is nope. it hard? So an open off the split in frame number two for Thomas Wolf. And you see there Stearns with a couple of strikes to get things started. Where today you've seen guys go to their bowling bags multiple times to grab different balls to get a different reaction. Brady just stayed in that and went about his day. Ooh. 
Hmm. Well, from where the ball entered the pocket, I didn't see that coming. No, that's a, a, a 7-10. He made a good adjustment, made a good shot. The ball there still didn't drive through the pins hard enough to kick that 7 or 10 out. If you saw all the pins kind of just fly straight back. Trying to get that seven to bounce off the sideboard to come back across, right? That's exactly what he was doing. That ball was whipping. And what Stearns has done all weekend long too is when, <laughs> when, when faced with a chance like this to put pressure on, he's done it. He has uh, over and over. Aha! Not this time. This appears but to be a very tricky spare. Yeah, this one's really <laughs> tricky. A two eight ten. Not usually made. I would think he's just going to go for two to get the count and then jump over to the next lane. Even if Brady is upset or doesn't know anything, you never see it with him. Take the two and move on. Mm -hmm. So both guys, though, open in the third frame. But you see the 20-pin advantage for the two strikes that Stearns has. Between uh, Chad and Brady, I've talked to a few guys this weekend, and when they beat you, they do it so gracefully that you're not even mad at them. <laughs> Plus, we're kind of used to it. That's a, making me wonder a little. I haven't, I haven't seen his ball go Brooklyn all day. I don't know if he did something different with his hand or if there's finally getting to be a, a spot out there that the ball is going to start hooking early. Here's Thomas Wolf in the fourth. <laughs> now the pocket has become a little elusive here for Thomas. Covers it. Great spare. Okay. Now there's... We're going to need a re-rack coming, right? He's, yeah, he's on, doing uh, this. On the left. Yeah, the seven pin fell over for some reason. That was close to chopping. And here's the re-rack on lane 31. Well, not that you would ever say you don't need a strike. That was, you but Thomas my mind. can use one. Good shot. The ball, if you notice, it kind of got lazy. Mm -hmm. it, it caught that spot down right in front of the head pin and stopped driving. We call that a flat 10 when the 6 goes in the gutter and kind of just wiggles. throws it hard at the spares usually. I thought that one might be a little harder. <laughs> 
Elvis turns his head. You can see where the past champions and their years are on there. It's one of the things that Midway Lanes has always done, and I think it's pretty cool for this tournament, is when you win one, you're up there forever. You are. And Stearns is up there for his win in 2022. That year, if you recall, he defeated Randy Peterson. We got one for everybody. We got a few more lanes to go. <laughs> then we'll have to start hanging them in the middle of the masking units. Started with two strikes. An open, two strikes, and then a third. That's it. One thing he does so well, you see two shots that looked like he was lost, and now he comes back and flushes two of them right in the pocket. And those are textbook. And you see those pins going down. Sixth frame for Wolf. And there's two of them up there, isn't there? Yep, yep. an eight-count sleeper there. He lofted that one a little bit more, but he's starting to get frustrated now. I was just thinking of the, uh, Chris Stapleton has a, a song, a popular song with the lyric in it that says there's nobody to blame but me. <laughs> yeah. I don't think it's written about bowling, but it probably could be. It could, right there. <laughs> That's missed spares a little bit shocking. It hooked pretty hard. Mm -hmm. Which I time. actually have tickets for a Chris Stapleton concert later this year, so I'm looking forward to that. I haven't I, seen him yet. I bet that, that will be a good one. Changing balls here. <laughs> he was looking for one, and he got a break. Went from a, a split to a glory. <laughs> That's impressive. Yeah. I mean, we've, you know, you feel, it's like, yeah, there you go. You know, you feel good for someone who gets a break like that when he hasn't had a lot of those in this match. No, he's had some, well, today, too, he's had some nine pins and eight pin. He needed that one right there. Brady Stearns looking for his fourth in a row. And it's his sixth of this match. <laughs> but you are right. But Brady's, in, in Chad Nelson's the same way, but Brady is that kind of that, ah, oh, shucks, sorry I just stepped on your throat kind of guy. <laughs> he is. <laughs> And he does it well. But they, they're both really good mm -hmm. down-to-earth guys who happen to be extremely talented mm -hmm. at this sport. You know, of all the years that, you know, Jim Mellon sat where you're at now and we talk about players or see players and Jim used, would, would often say, uh, things like, this is a guy that, if he wanted to, could go bowl on the PBA tour because he has ga that type of game. We're 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 looking right there at at a at a guy right that 100%. has that. Yeah. Well, he's he's been out and he he bowls with them uh, at the events that he goes to and PBA regionals. So after four strikes in a row, that's a nine count. That was the eighth frame for Brady Stearns. 
Brady trying to put his name on the short list of multiple time champions of this event. He's two frames away from that. Thomas has no options here. Mm -hmm. About to do that. Yeah. Needs those. And anything but those. It's, and that's pretty it's, much it, isn't it? Yep, not looking good then. There's another strike. Uh, we have the big check, the check you take to the banks, a couple of some trophies to hand out. We'll talk to the final five. All that's coming up as well right here on your news leader. Ninth frame, though, for Brady Stearns. Boards and in the pocket. That's going to take care of it. So Brady Stearns is your champion here in the 38th annual. He'll finish out his 10th frame and post his number. He rolled a 215 the year he beat Randy Peterson. You'll be higher than that here, right? Yes. Well, should be if he yeah. opens. <laughs> Thomas giving a little grief there. <laughs> yeah, so Stern's up to 212. He'll try to cover the 10 and get one more ball left here in the 10th frame. Like we mentioned, Brady's been in this position a lot, so anybody that's coming in to face him knows kind of what you're going to have to do. <laughs> they shake hands knowing that the, the winner has been determined. It's, again, we're just working on what the final number is going to be, but Brady Stearns, his final number will be 2,000. <laughs> <laughs> it will. <laughs> as, in, as in 2,000 bucks he's going to get here in a few minutes. Two twenty four. We have one more ball for Thomas to throw, and before she's official. One eighty nine, two twenty four to a one eighty nine. Congratulations to Brady Stearns. He is the champion of the thirty eighth annual KFYR TV Budweiser Bowling Classic. We'll talk to the guys and hand out the hardware when we come back.
You got the checks? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I want you. Yep. You're going to write his name on there. Do we have time? Probably not. Okay. Still so after. Say, say again. 30. Okay. Mike, Mike, test, test, test. Hello, Houston. No, we'll go, we'll go okay. through the five. If they want their money, they'll come out and get it. <laughs> right. You're first up, Jamie, here in a little bit. And welcome back to Midway Lanes. Brady Stern's name will be going on that check uh, in just a few minutes. But first, uh, Brian, we have some real checks to hand some out. And let's bring in Jamie. Jamie, come on in. Jamie Craig finishes in fifth place this year. He'll take $725 back with him to Minot. Jamie, come on over to this side. Brian will hand you the check and we'll ask you how your week went. Uh, shot two on 40s, one each day. Uh, thanks to Thomas Wolf on Saturday, he lined me up after shooting 140, and I went like plus 200 after that to barely squeak in the cut. Shot 140 out the gates today, and then just went on a tear and ended up plus 160. So it was a grind, but we got her done. All right, thank you very much, Jamie. Welcome to the TV today. Thank you. Jamie Craig from Minot. Ryan, Ryan Engel from Bismarck. He's the one that defeated Jamie in our first match here on TV. Ryan? We'll have a check here for $850. Same question to you, Ryan. How'd the week go? Uh, it was great. So yesterday did pretty well, and then today I did great until I got to step ladders, but that's okay. I had fun. And I especially want to thank all the sponsors that put this on, the Lord, my wife who sits through all this, my family and parents, and especially thank you guys. Without you guys, we couldn't do this, so I appreciate it so much. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Making the TV show for the first time, too, Ryan Engel. Chad, come on in. Chad Nelson will take a $1,000 check back with him to Owatonna, Minnesota. We were talking to you last, the last time, <laughs> last year, because Chad is, uh, uh, won this uh, tournament, and uh, he came close to making it back-to-back, -back, but not quite, but that's the way it goes, right? Yeah, that's the way it is. <laughs> Win some, lose some. So could be better. Could have been a lot worse. Couldn't be bowling on Sunday, too. <laughs> that's true. You were saying, though, that you and Brady travel a lot together, and uh, before we came onto the TV, you were saying that you were already stuck having to drive. T tell us why. <laughs> well, I started really good today, and I think I had a 200-pin lead on him, and I told him the stepladder didn't count, but whoever was low man before the stepladder had to drive home. And he beat me pretty easy. <laughs> so, so I'm driving. So Chad's driving, at least uh, at least to the St. Cloud anyway, right? Uh, yep, then I have to get the rest of the way home. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much, Chad, Thanks, our guys. champion Thanks. from last year, finishing in third place this year. Thomas Wolf. Thomas is from Bismarck. Thomas's check will be for $1,400, and we also have a uh, runner-up trophy for you. And unfortunately for you, Thomas, it's the second time you have to take that runner-up. I know you want to finish first, but... Uh, Second's better than third, right? Yeah, that's true. And, you know, last time I had to bowl small one and I got the best small one. And Brady's no slouch. I mean, he's probably one of the best players in the Midwest. So to be here and have the chance, I mean, just made the wrong ball choice right away. Maybe it would have been different. But hats off to him. He's a great champion, great bowler. So thanks to everybody at Midway Lanes, too, for, for everything this weekend. Everything ran pretty well. So That's what I was going to ask you. What's, what's that inner battle when you were – looking at a ball in your hand that's not doing what you want it to. You probably have six other ones uh, with you in the house. Uh, uh, how do you battle through with what to try to do and uh, and go from there? Uh, a little bit of trial and error, but um, when Brady's got the look on the gutter, I mean, <laughs> good luck. I mean, you're not going to beat him unless you're playing out there with him. So fortunately, I'm not very good at doing that like he is. So I'll play to my strengths, which was way left like I did. So uh, is what it is, and we'll try it again next year. Yeah. All right, thanks. We'll see him. Thomas will be in here next year. Thank you, Thomas Wolf, our runner-up this year. And a guy who was in the same position, uh, well, I guess in the last match now for three years in a row. Come on in, Brady. Two years ago, we were handing you the champion's check for $2,000. You'll have your name on that one and the championship trophy your way. But Brady Stearns uh, once again reigns supreme here uh, this year. Um, I, I believe I'm not going to – Put words in your mouth, but I'm thinking you're starting to like how things are playing out here at Midway Lanes. I, I definitely like coming up here for sure. Um, track record's been pretty good. I mean, the place is beautiful. Everything runs great. I mean, we couldn't have a better tournament. So we're just lucky that the sponsors 
everybody that puts on, Brian. I mean, it's such a great tournament. I mean, it fills every single year, and it, it does for a reason. It's a great tournament. How were, were you able to find success uh, out wide compared to most everybody else who uh, didn't uh, choose that path this weekend? Well, yesterday I wasn't anywhere near there. Yesterday I was further left like everybody else. So uh, today, I mean, typically you're, I was throwing a pitch black, a urethane ball, so the gutter's pretty good here. Scores are going to be low, so making your spares is pretty much what mattered today. So, I mean, if I could find a way to kind of stay away from everyone else and just find a way to get nine and make your spares and hopefully catch a couple good games, I mean, that was just the only strategy I had. Okay. Uh, Brian, what's, uh, what's your reaction to what Brady uh, did this weekend? What Brady usually does. <laughs> uh, when he was throwing urethane right away this morning, I, I had a pretty bold prediction that that's, he was going to take home the trophy today. Once we got to the step ladder, then it was even more. Well, he's going to take home the trophy. He's going to take home that big check. Why don't you go grab that thing? We'll present it to Brady Stearns here. <laughs> yes, his second one. Congratulations again to Brady Stearns. Brady is your champion of the 38th annual KFYR TV Budweiser Bowling Classic. Congratulations, Brady Stearns. Mm -hmm. Thank you, sir. And Brian, before we sign off, final thoughts? That was a great tournament. Like Brady said, we fill every year. We want to thank KFYR for, for starters for helping with this event. Uh, without you, it wouldn't happen. McQuaid's distributing. Uh, all the staff here. Uh, that I don't do much. I just walk around and act like I'm working. Everybody else is what makes this thing run well. And it does run well. And next year, we'll run it for year number 39. Thank okay, you very much sure. to Brian and everyone here at Midway Lane. So on behalf of all of us at KFYR TV, thank you so much for watching the 38th Annual KFYR TV Budweiser Bowling Classic. And one more congratulations to our champion, Brady Stern. Thank you for watching the 38th Annual KFYR TV Budweiser Bowling Classic. Sponsored by McQuaid Distributing, Licks Liquor, and your news leader.